The common comprises 182 hectares of open space and is designated as a site of metropolitan importance for nature conservation. It is crisscrossed by a river, roads, a railway line and a tram line that create 10 recognisable large compartments, each of which has definable peculiarities and some names relating to features or usage. There are numerous outlying small areas that tend to be overlooked. The topology of the common reflects its complicated history and a sad story of abuse. Interestingly though, the original despoilation of the common by gravel winning has arguably left the most interesting and ecologically significant features. The common lies on gravel deposits ascribed to the Taplow Terrace, deposited between 130,000 to 190,000 years ago during the evolution of the River Thames. Trenches cut through these gravels for pipelines and other services suggest that they are now in the region of 2 to 3 metres in depth and overlie London clay. The composition of the gravels is not uniform, ranging from large clasts of up to around 10 centimetres in diameter to fine sand and silt often arranged in lenses that are suggestive of a braided river system. Occasionally small areas of peat are exposed, which indicates that at times the river system stabilised and allowed a fringe of emergent vegetation to develop, only to be covered by sand or shingle at a later date. The main topographical feature of the common was the presence of extensive areas of sand mounds created by the yellow ant, Lassius flavus. They regulate heat and humidity within the ant colony, allowing the ants to place the larvae and puparia in the most thermally favourable conditions and mainly occur where the grassland is open, with a short turf. In addition to their obvious importance to the ants, they provide well-drained conditions favoured by the grassland assemblage that was once abundant across the common. Today the best examples are confined to very few locations, but their presence in some of the woodlands, albeit rather eroded and compacted, is indicative of the former open nature of the common. Crucially, this ant actively contributed to the development of sandy superficial soil layers that supported the grass heath communities that once categorised the common. The underlying gravel resource was exploited in the 19th century and the ravages of the time led to such public disquiet but an act was passed in 1891 to outlaw further changes to the commons topography. The Metropolitan Commons open bracket, Mitcham, close bracket, Supplemental Act 1891 ensured that gravel winning ceased and gave the people of the parishes of Mitcham, Bennington and Croydon control through a board of conservators. The common remains under the board's control to this day, but as time has passed, this management has not prevented further misuse of the common, nor has it safeguarded its topography. Furthermore, as the constituent parishes of Bennington, Croydon and Mitcham have been absorbed into modern boroughs, representation has passed from local people to political appointees from a wider area who potentially know nothing of the common or of its users. Furthermore, representation for the common's ecology and wildlife interests has been missing for the greater part of the board's history. In theory, the commons should be flat and open, with undulations resulting from gravel winning and with water bodies where major pits were dug. That vista was maintained for around the first 50 years, but in the 1950s a series of rubbish dumps were constructed. These initial dumps did not change the elevation of the land very markedly, perhaps, say, 3 metres, uh, certainly to around 2 metres, and involved cutting trenches that were subsequently covered with the original gravel overburden. Later, an area of Willow Swamp was chosen for a far larger tip that rose to an elevation of 10 metres. This area, now known as Mill Hill, elicited a major public outcry and tipping was eventually terminated because of public outrage. In the early 1970s, however, the upper surface of this tip was supplemented by a layer of London clay from the Pollard Hill housing estate development and its sides were covered with sewage sludge. At about the same time, half of one of the earlier tips was also covered with sewage sludge. The Conservatives' advisor at this time stressed that it would become a heathland as a result of this management. Gravel winning and tipping re-emerged in the late 1970s when the Conservatives embarked upon a programme of landscaping after gravel extraction. 
The soils involved were variable, but at least one had a high chalk content as a deliberate attempt to create a chalk downland. This program also elicited a major public outcry, but was only stopped when new locations on tips N1 and N2, extending as far as east as Seven Islands Ponds, were proposed. Since 1985, there have been no further tipping, possibly because the Conservatives finally realised that their earlier activities were actually illegal, as under that Act of 1891, it forbade changes to the Commons topography. Thus, in the course of less than 100 years, Mitchum Common changed from an open, largely flat expanse of grassland and wetland on gravels to an undulating topography composed of many soil types. Its former and current ecology reflects these many changes.